Welcome one, welcome all to episode two of the Phantom of Movie Podcast. How you doing, G? I'm doing well. Doing well, ready for episode two. Episode two? Yeah. All right, let's get it going. Um, so first off, first on the lineup, we're going to fan cast the X-Men for the MCU. Mm. Obviously, Disney in the business side of merging with Fox. So obviously, they have their X-Men lineup now, which is a phenomenal lineup that I would love to keep. But obviously, that's not going to happen. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to fan cast. I have I have them all all laid out. Mm-hmm. So we're going to start um, with, and this is to incorporate to the Avengers universe, all that kind of stuff. Guardians, you obviously know that. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna start off with Rogue. Okay. My pick for Rogue is Anya Taylor Joy. Anya, Anya Taylor, Taylor Joy. Joy, yes, sir. From she's known for mainly horror films. She's been in The Witch. Split, which most people have seen, I'd say. Uh, she was in Thoroughbred. Thoroughbreds. Yes, and she's set to be in the new Mutants movie, which may or might, uh, may or may not never ever release. Um, so that shows one that shows me that she's interested in being in a big tentpole film like this, and two, well, she's getting cut short. She thought she was going to get a trilogy. Mm. Um, so I think this would be a great place to usher her back in. Because why wouldn't Marvel, Disney Marvel, want an actress like her? Yeah. One of the premier young actresses, incredibly talented, yeah. incredible range. And I think that a character like Rogue fits her perfectly. Mm. Now, what are Rogue's powers again, specifically? See, why do you, you got to put me on the spot like that? You know, I'm not a big X-Men reader. Well, you know, uh, not to get all technical, but like from... She's creepy. Because I, I know I that... I think if, if you ask Maria Hill, you know, she's uh, telling Captain America all about Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, who are X-Men. Mm, i didn't know that he's like english please he's f- he's fast she's weird oh okay there we go the <laughs> kind of i think rogue would fit into the weird category uh, I see. Uh, but you know she has an interesting storyline with um i'm not exactly sure of what her powers are exactly but i know that she can see into people's minds um she can read minds she, it's something with her touch is dangerous um but I do think that just from the character of Rogue we got from the previous X-Men films, I think Anya Taylor-Joy would be a perfect fit for that one, mm-hmm. just because of her style and her range. Mm. Um, sort of, she can play the um, uh, introvert character who sort of shies away from the rest of the team, not in a Wolverine kind of way, like, uh, get out of my face kind of way, you yeah, know? Wolverine was a curmudgeon. Like curmudgeon, just yeah. Pretty much didn't care. So that's Anya Taylor-Joy. What do you think? Yes, no? In the middle, I would I would agree because I've seen her in her, I've seen those movies, The Witch. Yeah, and mm. the thing is, she hasn't like blown up yet as an actress. Yeah. Um, I don't think it'd be too hard to get her into this. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. <laughs> Some of these picks are going to be <laughs> ridiculous, just so you know. Yeah, but I do think that they are the best picks possible. But yeah, right now my mind is I can see that happening. So I can good. See, I so can now see. uh, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move to Storm. Uh, for Storm, my pick is. Nathalie Emanuel. I believe mm-hmm. that's how you say her name. I think so. Uh, if you don't know her, she plays in Game of Thrones. She's Daenerys' right hand, basically. Yeah. Uh, she's the one in the relationship with Grey Worm. Mm-hmm. Uh, she also plays in the Fast and Furious films. The most recent one, she plays the computer hacker who... Uh, what's that program she created? God's Eye? I guess so. I Kurt Russell's yet. like, we gotta get God's Eye. Mm. And she's like, I am God's Eye. Anyways, oh, wow. I think she'd be perfect for Storm. Uh... I do think that I'm not trying to copy the mold we had with the Brian Singer X-Men films, but I do think that she could capture the essence of the character. She has a look, but more importantly, I do think that uh, it's important that one, she's not a huge actress yet, mm-hmm. and but she knows how to navigate these giant uh, franchises being in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that all lends it to it. And she's just an incredible actress. If you've seen Game of Thrones, uh, I think she'd be a great piece in an ensemble. She doesn't like beg for the screen. Mm. Uh, she doesn't have a big ego, it appears. Um, and she's a good actress, so that's my pick for Storm. Yeah, you've seen Game of Thrones. I've seen Game of Thrones. Do yeah, you second that pick. I do, because I've seen it's mostly just for me seeing her in that work. I've yet to see the. F- yeah, she hasn't been in like action scenes really in the movie in yeah. the, the show, but I do think that. Um, Oh, she's been in Fast and Furious. She had to do some stunts for that. Mm. So that shows, I think that she's at least up to uh, that task. Yeah. I mean, so far we're we're talking about rising stars that we see in the business yeah. in terms of. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, so far. 
Um, but yeah, I think I think she would be a really good fit to um to be Storm. Yep. Possibly. All right, so now we're gonna start into uh some bigger names. No, no okay. First, I'm gonna go with uh Jean Grey. Yeah, my Jean, Jean Grey, Grey pick. <laughs> okay, this is just because I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I do think she has the chops easily. Uh, she is the star of the biggest franchise on the planet. Here we go. Uh, that would be Daisy Ridley. No surprise there. Um, she wasn't the first name that came to mind, but the more I thought about it, um, one, I don't think she'd really be interested in this role because she has Star Wars, and that's a lot to carry. We don't know how that's moving forward, but I do think that she would be great. She is a professional at keeping things on the down low. She wouldn't spoil anything. You wouldn't have True. to worry about any of that. But beyond that, I think she has a lot of charm. Uh, she's not. I think she can be that like a uh, sort of gritty but likable uh, protagonist that you've seen in Star Wars as Rey. She can sort of take that character mold, if you will, bring it to the X Men, and be this uh, basically. An opposite to Cyclops, um, and the actor I have chosen for that, I think they would work extremely well together. And also, I mean, I just love seeing Daisy Ridley on screen. Besides Star Wars, uh, she was a narrator in a documentary called The Eagle Huntress. She was a voice oh, yeah. in Peter mm-hmm. Rabbit, mm-hmm. and she was in uh, Murder on the Orient Express. That she was, yeah. Yeah, and she was great in that. I mm-hmm. thought she was really, really good. Probably my favorite part behind Kenneth Branagh. Um, but for that reason... Uh, I'm picking her as Jean Grey. I think that for for the X Men, I think some of the characters I want to be older, um, older characters that have kind of been around for a while. But I think Cyclops and Jean Grey need to be younger, and they're going to be kind of ushered in in this film that I'm imagining in my mind to uh, sort of take the mantle, maybe after a movie or two, um, as sort of leading the X Men. So with that, I'll go to. Well, actually, what do you think, Daisy Ridley? Yes or no? I do I do like the part that you said about charming. She is quite charming. Charming, yes. And then she would be a really good fit when it comes to Jean Grey. And we know she's committed to like working out and Oh and yeah, really, we've seen like, we've seen those behind the role. scenes. Yeah. Um And yeah, I mean I think that Daisy Ridley I mean she's basically turned into a giant star while being in very, very few films. Mm-hmm. And so I think it'd be perfect to try and go after her for Jean Grey. Especially mm-hmm. when you make that the face of your franchise, Jean Grey and Cyclops. Uh, mm-hmm. So, moving on from that, though, my pick for Cyclops yeah, I was about to say. is a guy who I think is extremely, extremely underrated. That guy should be a complete household name by now. And this would definitely be the movie to give it to him. That's Dylan O'Brien. Dylan O'Brien. Dylan O'Brien. Mm. Movies like, uh, let's see, he's been in... Deepwater Horizon, which was a small role, but I thought was some of his best work he's ever done. His Maze Runner trilogy. Maze Runner trilogy. He's the main guy in there. There we go. Carried carried the trilogy. Carried oh. the trilogy. Single, and I think that trilogy would have been a lot harder to watch if they wouldn't have had a guy as good as Tony O'Brien. Yeah. Um, funny thing, I remember you dragged me into that movie. Mm-hmm. I did not want to go. <laughs> I was like, who wants to see this? Dylan like, O'Brien. High school <laughs> tween movie. It was all, it was, oh, I was so against it. Ended up going. Obviously, I love that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the subsequent sequels sort of uh, weren't as good, but mm-hmm. I still enjoyed them for his performances alone. Yeah. Um, well, let's not forget American Assassin. American, did you ever see it? I have yet to see Dude, that one. I've heard. American Assassin is freaking awesome. The movie, you can say what you want about the story or whatever. I had a great time. Dylan O'Brien, Michael Keaton paired up. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton had a lot of fun making that movie. You could just tell. Um, and Dylan O'Brien just added another notch to his career that is being underappreciated. Mm-hmm. But Dylan O'Brien, he's a young guy. He, If you see him in American Assassin, you can tell that that guy's ready to be an action star. Mm-hmm. And he also can relay depth in his character. Um, he has the acting chops. I think him and Daisy Ridley would play really well off each other. And they could definitely carry franchises. They've already shown that. Uh, yeah, both of them, yeah. So Dylan O'Brien... As Cyclops, Daisy Ridley as Jean Grey. Now I'm gonna go to the easiest pick of all. Um, this one has been speculated and fan casted a million times over. I tried to go with someone else, but at the end of the at the end of the day, he's my guy. He's a guy I want to see. That's Wolverine, Tom Hardy. No, it's only a matter that of time. It's Tom Hardy. It's mm. the only guy. 
Well, now, mean, now you were saying something about like you know with the Venom movie, if that yeah, okay. <laughs> well, Venom's coming out. Venom's gonna. Well, it's they said it's tracking better than they thought. Hmm. Maybe sixty, seventy million opening weekend. I doubt it, but you never know. Um, we're not going. I'm not going to see it the first night. We're going to see a Star Is Born. Oh yeah, Which, that's true. Dude, they have a a pre uh a pre screening on Wednesday. If I get off early enough, I'm gonna try and go seven o'clock. Oh, the hmm. Wednesday before it starts. Oh, uh, okay. Before it opens. A... But then we'll maybe see Win- <laughs> Venom on Thursday. We'll mm-hmm. see. But yes, yeah, Tom. But okay, so say Tom. Venom doesn't do great. They don't get sequels. Come over to the MCU. Play Wolverine. I think Wolverine's the hardest part for them to cast. Yeah. It's the easiest for the fans, which makes it great. Because, you know, you have Hugh Jackman. He's been Wolverine forever. Yeah. And a lot of choices would piss people off. Just sort of like, this guy can't live up to the legacy of Hugh Jackman. And that's not necessarily what they want. I don't think Wolverine has to be the focal point. Mm -hmm. I think in the MCU, they'll stick more to the comics. Where Cyclops is the leader of the team, really. Uh, We don't need to go back to X3, where he dies in the first, (laughs) like, 15 minutes. Um but I think that he has that grizzled feel. Um, he's sort of like uh, he could definitely play that that uh, off off the beaten path kind of. Now with Tom Hardy, I know he's he's not that tall, is he? No, he's like five nine, I think. Yeah, five nine. Yeah, so I'm like, well, at so least so it's closer. Yeah, you he's know, not I, six one. I know. Yeah, I know that the character Wolverine himself, and he's is, bulkier. Like yeah. Hugh Jackman got ripped. Yeah, but like uh, Tom Hardy's just naturally like stockier. I think. Yeah, stocky um, is a good word to use. Yeah. And he fits that. He's one of the best actors on the planet. His That's, voice is already. Mm-hmm. They probably won't even have to edit that thing. Mm. Uh, I don't want to go. Away. Hey, he won't have a mask. Well, yeah. actually, what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> he probably would have he a mask. Probably would. Actually, I was. I jumped the gun there. Wolverine <laughs> messed up his grill. He doesn't want to show his teeth, so we gave him a mask. There we go. <laughs> Um, he's probably gonna have like a muzzle. Uh, but what about that yellow suit? The yellow, dude. Going okay, the yeah. Things. My my dream for the MCU X Men is actually I think the yellow suit might be a bit too on the nose for them. So I want to go blue, the blue and yellow suit, mm. where it's uh mainly blue with yellow accents. Mm. They teased one in uh the end of <laughs> in the end of the Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, good movie. Third third act kind of fell apart. Yeah. Um, but Tom Hardy, come on. I know. I think the fans would. Maybe perhaps. then Christopher Nolan will direct it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. No, probably not. I think. I think. And then you sell him. You sell him short. Who? Tom? No, not Tom. Chris Nolan? Yeah, you're probably. No, right. that'd be a dream. <laughs> that'd be wonderful. I just don't think he'd want to play in the MCU sandbox. Yeah. I don't think he'd want to like have people telling him, "Well, you need to do this to get to here and here. You can do what you want in between, but you need to get from this point to this point." You know, with me when it comes to tom hardy it, it sort of like fit the description it fit the bill like you know him being small stocky was the big word gritty. That, yeah gritty he's, gritty he's grizzled yeah uh he's intimidating uh i think that it'd be great and he's a reluctant hero all right yeah that's so, wolverine yeah, wolverine now i am move on to beast okay this ladies one. and gentlemen <laughs> the beast. so yeah the beast the beast none other than the obvious choice jordan peele Jordan Peele, everybody knows him from Key and Peele, uh, countless hilarious skits. Then he went and did Get Out, um, but obviously he's still he's still a, a very talented actor, and he hasn't really gotten to bite his teeth into a role like this. If you look at Jordan Peele, especially I think back uh, I think back to when I saw him at the Oscars, um, he has a very studious look to him, you know, and I do think he's a funny guy, obviously. But I do think that it would be a great opportunity for him to show his range. Well, in the MCU, though, he can also bring quips. He could go. Imagine Jordan Peele as a beast uh, having a conversation with Tony Stark. I think that would be great. I think Jordan Peele has the, uh, the screen presence to go beside the person who I'm casting as Professor X, which takes, uh, it takes a big voice, I think. It takes someone who can command the screen in any way possible to go um, next to this guy I'm casting as Professor X. So, Jordan Peele is a beast. Not your first thought, right? It wasn't. I, I, that totally caught me off guard. I wasn't thinking. But then as you were describing... Um, I mean, I think the beast is a fun character. You know, it, you get to have fun with the different choreography he does. And I think that he's always sort of um, intellectually besting people. And I think that that's something that could appeal to Jordan Peele. Everybody 
thought of him as a funny man. Then everybody thought of him as this esteemed director, which he is both. But I think he can be more than that still. And I, I do believe, um, not that he has something to prove, but I think this would be a nice step in his career. Also, it's a nice check. It is, yeah. yeah. I was wondering how much of a, like, you know, in terms of he's usually, is he like Professor X's, like, sort of right hand? Like, he usually yeah. does a lot for him? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I expected. He works, yeah. with, him. He works with him really closely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, Jordan Peele, was, yeah, totally caught me off yeah. guard. But So now we're going to go, okay, I'm going to go Magneto, then I'm going to go Professor X, the oh, last two Magneto, we got here. Yeah. So for Magneto, I have two picks that I'm sort of back and forth about. Uh, the first one I'll say, uh, is the sort of easier pick for me. And I think it's cool because it, uh, it's a nod to previous films in the MCU. Um, and I need someone who's really, really, really able to commit to a role, um, has a strong, a strong voice on screen. And so first, my first pick for Magneto would be Kenneth Branagh. Mm. Uh, you may know him. He directed the first Thor film and he was, uh. Hercule Poirot in uh, Murder on the Orient. Murder on the Orient. Yeah, and he directed the film. Was he in Dunkirk? Kenneth Branagh. Uh, Who was the? No, that's Mark Rylance. Oh wow. When uh, he's <laughs> where we go- where we headed, Dunkirk. What about the? Wasn't he like on the on the on the pier? Yeah. Who's that? Mm, I'm pretty. I'll have to look it up, but I'm gonna continue for now. Yeah. But he Kenneth? was also in Harry Potter. He was one of oh, the yeah, that's uh, true. professors. I'm not a Potterhead, so I have no idea which one. But yeah, what led you to Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh? Branagh? I just think that he, for Magneto and for Professor X, I'm casting sort of older actors for the most part, I think. You know, that's where I went immediately. I don't want to copy Patrick Stewart and uh, Ian McKellen, but I do think that there's something that the leader of each side of this sort of regime of mutants are older, more experienced. They've been around the block, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think Kenneth Branagh, he's obviously an esteemed actor um he's a guy that you never know when he's going to pull out an oscar performance and i think that he has a really strong presence he can be a villain i definitely see him as a villain he could just um sort of confuse you and conflict you and i think that he can deliver like a monologue that would be for the ages you know he's that kind of guy um and so kenneth Branagh, but my other guy um, not quite as old, but I do think that he really needs a win, is Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon, he's always circled, his name's always circled around comic book franchises. He was almost Mysterio. Jake Gyllenhaal got that. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I love Matt Damon. I, You know, growing up, so many of his movies I loved. Born, the Bourne franchise. Good uh, Will Hunting. Good Will Hunting is one of my top ten favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. But when you look back at what he's been making lately... You have downsizing, that was that was not good. Hmm. The Great Wall, okay, that yeah, that I totally good. forgot about the Great yeah, Wall. The, <laughs> um, before that, uh, there's something else. He was born, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Jason Bourne. I liked the movie. It didn't live up to the other three, but I liked it. Yeah. Um, but still, a lot of people were kind of sour on it. Uh, so I think that Matt Damon is a guy that he's been circling fran- comic book franchises, uh, and why not sort of test his chops going with a villainous role, which he hasn't really done very much, if at all. Yeah. Um, And I think that it'd be interesting to see Matt Damon in that Magneto role, just simply to see him play a villain. I think that's enticing enough for me. I think that with the MCU, it's almost a, almost a guaranteed hit, you know? And with Magneto, he guarantees himself a franchise there. And beyond that, I just want to see Matt Damon back in a big role that's doing well you know i want to see him doing good work but now could matt damon have a boston accent as magneto yeah well i mean that yeah was definitely not boston but mm. But i think he'll wear he'll he'll have a patriots helmet instead of his normal magneto helmet true he'll wear a pat's helmet uh he'll have a brady bobblehead tom brady will be in there as a juggernaut wow okay yeah that we that wasn't planned but yeah but i think he'll do it tv12 Throwing him, uh, I don't know, he's going to be throwing mutants downfield. Mm. Yeah, Matt Damon and Kenneth Branagh. Yeah, so it's between those two. Mm-hmm. We'll go back and forth. Now, Okay. Yeah. the ringer. This one is the, the pick I'm most proud of. Mm. <laughs> the guy that, if this happened, uh, I would probably uh, burst into tears and then go celebrate for a full week. 
Mm-hmm. Professor X, none other, perhaps the greatest actor in my life, Mr. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington! Denzel freaking Washington. Denzel Washington would be the perfect Professor X. He has, I mean, he's one of the best actors of all time. Uh, I think if you look at him in uh, The Equalizer, you can see him being sort of that cold, and he's bald also, that just plays into look. Mm. But I can see him as this guy who just, I can see all these students, you know, coming into his school and sort of being pretentious or thinking, you know, who's this old guy? He can't, you know, they have these powers. They think they're on top of the world. They think they can do whatever they want. And I think that Denzel could come in with his presence, sort of humble them, you know, bring them back to earth, that kind of stuff. I think that the MCU would benefit greatly. Obviously, anything benefits from Denzel Washington. But, I mean, it's something that nobody ever thinks about. Denzel has only been one in one sequel. That was The Equalizer 2. And that film, in my opinion, was not very good. Mm. Where I love the first Equalizer, I think his shot at redemption, being the X-Men, obviously subsequent sequels, Denzel can cement his name as comic book royalty, just another notch on the belt for Denzel. And who knows? Denzel's the kind of guy that you put him in an X-Men movie, we might end up getting an Oscar nomination. I think his name alone will give it that that extra step they need, you know? I'm, I can, I'm just imagining him using Cerebro. And yeah, in the danger room, just the, just throwing everything you can at him. Imagine, yeah. But see, imagine Denzel Washington on one side, Kenneth Branagh on the other side, and just having like a great dialogue. That's all I want. I just want to see Kenneth Branagh as Magneto, Denzel Washington. You have Jordan Peele right there as a beast. Uh, Wolverine's off on the side trying to make sure Cyclops and uh, Rogue. No, he's he's off on the side with Rogue. They're going to be fighting someone. Mm-hmm. You got Professor X, Magneto. In the middle, you got Cyclops with Dylan O'Brien. You have Jean Grey with Daisy Ridley. I don't know where I'm going with this, but that's a fan cast. I think that that would be a very expensive cast overall, but I, if you could put it together, you'd make a very happy 23-year-old fan. Denzel Washington. Is Denzel Professor Washington is Professor X. X. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Yeah, I you can see, see it. You can totally see it. Mm-hmm. Then, in the sequel, we'll just replace him with James McAvoy. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. No, we can pull a... Uh, Fantastic Beast. I don't want to get onto that, but <laughs> it'll be Denzel Washington the whole movie, and at the end, they'll reveal that really is John Boyega. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. And Daisy Ridley's already in this. Yeah, we'll pair him back. <laughs> Might as well. Might as well. Oh, I've, no, I did cover everybody. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, fan cast X Men. If Disney's listening to this, you're welcome. Yeah, this is a uh, hire me. I'm not. Uh, I'm free. As yeah. a casting director, yeah. I'll work for free. Oh, okay. Actually, I'll pay them. I will pay them. How much would you pay them? Uh, how much can I get for a kidney? Oh, like sixteen grand. Then I'll pay him seventeen grand. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, you really want Denzel Washington? I really want Denzel. Wa- I will pay part of his salary. I'll oh. pay sixteen thousand of his salary. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so moving on next up, we got Joaquin Phoenix as a Joker. Uh, have you seen the images they released? I have. I've seen images. I've seen that little, uh, that little clip. Yeah. With the little the music. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. This is some other things. Like, I think it's like, I don't know what it was. Yeah. Like. Him with the clown. Um, yeah. With the red nose. But anyways, yeah. I think it's interesting. His paint looks very similar to, um, the Joker paint from the masks in the dark night mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah you know, from the opening scene he had his whole his whole crew robbing that bank his paint looks just like those masks they wore yeah um i'm not sure if it has comic tie-ins to be honest but i do like the look <clears throat> my one hesitation uh with this is that todd phillips is directing it uh he came to fame directing the hangover films um the first one made me laugh for like a week straight um but the sequels we're not very good. And I mean, not good at all. Mm, <laughs> um, yeah. And so my one uh, question with this is I love when people get creative and go off the beaten path and do something original in film. But I only like it when they have a vision for it. 
I hate when people just do something different to be different. And that's my only fear with this. Um, I think that the cast, regardless, will be able to put in a good movie. Um, but I do just wonder. I, I just don't know what to expect from Todd Phillips, honestly. Mm, yeah. I mean, th- when you told me about the uh, the Hangover movies, I forgot. Yeah, he directed. Yeah, that's him. That's Todd Phillips. Yeah. And so it's it's hard to hard to have that bit of confidence that um that everything is going smoothly yeah the cast is there joaquin phoenix i mean he, yeah he's he's but the thing is joaquin <clears throat> i'm pretty sure he didn't sign on until he read a script and mm-hmm. joaquin's really picky with his projects so that will i mean that lends more uh more upside to it than downside and joaquin phoenix yeah. obviously one of the best actors working today uh, we had Alec Baldwin in the Thomas Wayne role for a second, and they dropped out. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is why, but it came out in a report that uh, they said that he's going to be playing Thomas Wayne, and it's going to be a Trump type role. The next day, he dropped out. So, oh, oh, and he okay. he does Trump impersonations yeah. on SNL, but I mean, I don't think he wants to get pigeonholed <laughs> into being <laughs> Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, but so. The other thing is, what role do you think Thomas Wayne's going to play? And do you think we're going to see Batman? Because the Joker, I mean, he's already pretty old. He is, yeah. He's pretty old. And if Thomas Wayne's in this, we don't know what capacity, but I got to imagine that somehow, some way, he's going to play into the Joker turning into the Joker, which I kind of don't want. But I do have a feeling that's going to happen. Yeah. And that's one of the things, like, I, that was one of the things that I didn't quite know in terms of, like, is this like an origin movie? It's definitely an origin. So it's going to like try to He's establish. sort of have his one bad day that changed it all. Yeah. Which uh, we saw in the 1989 Batman with Jack Napier. Um, that's Jack Nicholson's character. Oh, yeah, yeah. Turned into the Joker. That's really, I mean, it's an origin. I love, I really enjoy that movie. This is the first Batman movie I saw. But I don't love the idea of Joker sort of. Um, I don't want to understand the Joker. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, uh, that's that's I, the one thing that I have the quarrel with. That's yeah. kind of what I'm worried about. I don't want to. I don't want to understand him. I don't want to feel for him. Um, I just want him to be a guy that shows up and wreaks havoc for the sake of wreaking havoc. Yeah, um, chaos. Yeah, and that may still happen. That may still come to be. But the fact that this character, we know that Joaquin's Joker is a normal guy that wants to be a clown. So that already sort of, I don't know. Yeah. It throws me off a little bit. It, yeah, initially it did f- the same for me too. I didn't quite I mean, uh, it looks great. It does it, look great. I like how it looks. It's just same. that I'm worried about yeah, Todd Phillips. I'm worried yeah, about story. Story, yeah, that's a huge thing. And then I think Todd- the execution will be fine, but story, yeah, story's a big one for me. I don't want because there's so many things I'm worried about. I don't want to understand the Joker. I don't want to feel for him. I don't want him to feel like a hero at the end of it or an anti-hero. I want to know like what What's the thing he's going against in the third act? Yeah. What I mean, is there another villain? Is he going against Thomas Wayne? Which is what I kind of... One thing I really don't want... I really, really, really don't want him to be the guy that kills Bruce Wayne's parents. Oh, that that would be... I would really... I would be shocked. Dislike that. Because I'm like, isn't in the comics like it's... Well, he doesn't really have an origin. I yeah. Mean, we've done the killing joke. He has you know, different offshoot origins, but I, that mean, would I think most of the people prefer when he doesn't. And if you have him kill yeah, I would be really Thomas and Martha with yeah. Bruce there, and I that's the fear I have of the story going that way. Oh, yeah, I didn't really think about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big concern now. So <laughs> it could go that direction. I'm, su- I'm 50-50. I do think that no matter what, we're going to get a great performance Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. from Joaquin. This is the perfect kind of role for him, something he can dig his teeth really deep into. And I do think that uh, he's definitely not going to give us anything we've seen before. He's not going to rip off Heath Ledger. He's not going to go the Jared Leto route. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be different for sure. Yeah. And then it's just that one upside that, like you said, you know, Joaquin Phoenix, he picks his roles carefully. I mean, he, he, read, he read the script. But see, the other thing is, I said the same thing about Tom Hardy. And that's why I was really oh, excited yeah. for Venom. <laughs> I really liked the first trailer. It showed very little Venom, but I was thinking this is going to be a great movie. It may not be a great Venom movie. I think this is going to be a great movie. And then the second trailer hit. And pancreas? I don't know. Pa- the pancreas? Uh, no, the wor- one of the worst <laughs> lines I've ever heard in any trailer. It'll be this armless, legless thing blowing in the wind. 
Like a turd. Like a turd? Like a, who wrote this? Yeah. A 12-year-old? That's just what it seems like to me. Uh, But yeah, so I'm holding out hope for the Joker. Don't understand why they decided to make a Joker movie when Batman still hasn't gotten his own movie. Yeah. This isn't, I mean, it's got to be in Gotham. Yep. How can you? I just, ah, I hate the idea of establishing Gotham. There's well, wait, wait. It's an offshoot, though. It's it's a it's a one off. So I guess it doesn't connect to the overall universe. So I guess it's all right. But I don't see how you make this Joker movie without making a Batman movie for your own universe that you're trying to save, really. <laughs> yeah, their save is the word. Yes. Birds of Prey got a release date that, today. Oh, I was think I was, was like about January to mention January second, twenty twenty or something. Yeah, twenty twenty. Like yep. I just don't get it. Why are you giving all these side characters movies without, you know, without Batman? Yeah. We've barely seen Gotham in BVS. Barely saw it in Justice League. What about, uh, what's his name? Who plays uh, Gordon? Christopher Mintz Plass. <laughs> Gordon. Oh, J.K. Simmons. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah, what about him? Look, yeah, we're, we're, he was a perfect choice for J.K. They casted it great. I can rant. Okay, look. Ben Affleck. Could have and should have been the greatest Batman we've ever had. Mm. He has the look. He ha- he's a huge fan. He-, he sold his house to Kevin Smith back in the day. He had a bat cave in yeah. that thing. He built his own damn bat cave. Oh my gosh. And I- I'm forgetting the guy's name, but he uh, he's directed a lot of the Batman animated films. He did uh, uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, he did the Doctor Strange movie, I think, the animated one, which is really good. He might have done Mask of the Phantasm, but he storyboards a lot of uh a lot of movies and he storyboarded a lot of DC films and he was working apparently it came out recently he was working on storyboarding the Batman script from Ben Affleck that they trashed mm. before they fired him as director and producer and maybe actor that we don't know of yet mm-hmm. he said it's perhaps the best Batman story he's ever read yeah and. His uh, interaction with Deathstroke is some of the best interaction he's ever had with Deathstroke. And you know Batman's had plenty of interaction. And that blows my mind. That tells me that, I mean, Ben better not be Batman anymore. I would feel so, I would feel so hurt if I was Ben Affleck. And I put so much into this Batman script. He's wanted this character his whole life. When he took the role of Daredevil in 2004, he asked, you know, he's like, do you think I could still be Batman one day if I'm Daredevil? That was his concern. Oh, and wow. this breaks my heart. Yeah, and especially like here we have Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, you know he's a great actor playing the Joker. And then, but I do think Jared Leto didn't get his shot, man. Yeah, he should have had a better shot at the Joker. He should have been the main villain of Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. David Ayer said himself that if he could go back, he would make him the main villain. There's a lot of studio interference, so you can't really knock him too hard for that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. Yes, sir. I guess time will tell. Yep, like like how he looks, but yeah, there's all these variables that has us a bit concerned. A bit concerned. Uh, next up, we got Child's Play is getting a reboot. Uh, Child's Play obviously is the name of the Chucky films. Obviously, later we got like the Bride of Chucky, probably the son of the seed of Chucky. We got oh. some other Chucky. I've never liked the Child's Play movies. Uh, with all these reboots we've had. Halloween is obviously looking like a hit. Mm-hmm. It was a massive hit. Yeah. We also had Friday the 13th, which was pretty decent as a slasher film, but not a hit. Yeah. And Friday uh, the 13th was terrible. Mm-hmm. So this this Child's Play movie comes back. I hear the synopsis is apparently something to do with AI. Of course, this just makes it less appealing to oh, me. Wow. The new <laughs> look of Chucky, they show a little half-face yeah, picture. Yeah. It looks so polished. I don't... I already feel like Senses of Small Soldiers. Have you seen that movie? I don't think I have. It's like these, it was, I think it was like 1999. Or so, it's old. It's older than that, I think. Basically, this guy owns a toy shop and his son goes in there. Uh, Military-grade chips get manufactured into the wrong thing. Instead of some like missiles, they get put into toys. Okay. They end up wreaking havoc in this neighborhood, killing each other, uh, nearly killing a lot of people. And that's what I see from this. I honestly already can't stand it. Really? AI, huh? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's going to get some military chip embedded in his head. Because I'm like... They're going to buy a doll from a toy shop for Christmas or something. It's going to tear through the wrapping paper. 
they're gonna it's gonna get loose it's gonna terrorize a small town called quincy and you know it's gonna be another chucky movie he's probably gonna be foul mouth i just don't understand how a doll does that i've never bought into it yeah that w- that would kind of like now i've seen yeah some of the chucky movies and it's like i don't i don't know like how he came to be the you know it's, chucky. it's a it's a serial killer it's yeah a serial killer got put into the doll um originally that is a lot better idea. Than was it through like some sort of like supernatural? It's means? been a long time. I believe it was. Yeah, because I'm like I would yeah. prefer that. Like, Same. I don't want to see some like robot Chucky. Like it, I can already hear it now. Siri's voice comes out as he's about to kill someone. Should I play Toto by Africa? <laughs> Africa by Toto? Yeah. And there goes Chucky on a killing spree. <laughs> Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, that specific song. Yeah. But, yeah, I just don't. Yeah, Child's Play doesn't get me out of bed in the morning. Because when you, when you talked about a movie you've already seen, that sort of could perhaps be, like, like literally. Yeah. Accidental. It's just. It just seems like another another cheap reboot they're trying to do without really putting. And really, Chucky. Yeah. I don't know how many people are into that doll. It just seems ridiculous to me that a doll could do this. Yeah. Like, I understand the Annabelle doll. That's some supernatural stuff. But, I mean, if I see a doll running at me, I'm just going to punt it, you know? Yeah. What are you going to do? Cut my leg? <laughs> Big deal. Yeah. It's a I... doll. Yeah, I'm with you on this I'm one. Gonna, uh, I'm just going to rip the seam. <laughs> Watch. Now he's going to have, like, a hand cannon. He's going to be, like, polished. Iron, Iron Man Jr. He is polished. Like, what? What is that? Oh, it's uh, nanobots. You like yeah, but so far, y- yeah, I'll, I'm just going to wait. We'll yeah, just, I'm we'll just going to wait. We'll just see. And we'll they got Aubrey Plaza in it. Um, I like her a lot, but yeah, she's yeah. typically comedic, which makes me even more nervous mm-hmm. that they're going to be too lighthearted. Uh, slasher films are my favorite kind of horror, and Chucky's never been I one think, of those. I think it was Seed of Chucky, wasn't it? Red Man, wasn't he in there? Uh, I think, dude, you're asking the wrong man. I watched. Oh my! I've gosh. seen Seed of Chucky maybe once, maybe once. Yeah, I've seen it a couple times. I just remember this scene where they were just in his house, I think, and it was like yeah. a glass table. Red man, he he was in there. What did he do with the glass table? I think. Well, I think Chucky just was under it, so I just oh. tried to create this unique shot. Like, oh, was it like? Uh, it can't be as bad as Buster Rhymes going. Whoa! Okay, Roundhouse yeah. and Michael Myers out okay, of the second yeah. story window. You are right. You are right on that one. It's, um, but yeah, it's you know, a child's play. Yeah, we'll see. That's all we can say right now. We'll see. So we'll far, we'll see. So far, I guess maybe. Hopefully, we'll get another like a Friday the Thirteenth reboot after this. So we'll get on this trend. You know, we'll have it hit Halloween. Hit no, no. Now my formula's off. Take that all back. <laughs> I was gonna go hit miss, hit miss. My my math is wrong. I need to go back to school, <laughs> or I'm just going to go look some up on YouTube. Anyways, final topic right here. How about that Captain Marvel trailer? Hmm, Captain Marvel. All I can say is Phil Coulson. Phil Coulson's back. He's back. He has hair. He has a full head of hair. He's got the sunglasses. I was hoping he was going to have a mustache and a mullet, to be oh. honest. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's what I wanted from Phil Coulson. Uh... We haven't seen him on screen since the Avengers. Exactly. Obviously, he's been in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's still coming out with a new season. Tahiti. Yeah, he's the only reason I still watch that show. He's terrific. Yeah. But it's great to see Phil Coulson. The de-aging on him really didn't seem like they had to do too much. Yeah. But Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson looks great. Yeah. I think that Marvel has been definitely the, uh, and Disney in general, Yeah. pretty much the leading force in this de-aging technique. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they've done it with Kurt Russell already. Civil they, War was like the one. Civil War was fantastic with RDJ. Yeah. But I think Kurt Russell, uh, who plays Hank Pym? Oh, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. Um, uh, he was fantastic. De-aged. Uh, they did. Uh, yeah. And I think that. So I'm really excited to see how it does, how that technology fares over a long course of time. Obviously, Samuel L. Jackson is going to be probably the second leading person in this film. Yeah. But Brie Larson. Obviously, an Oscar-winning actress, maybe the best actress in the MCU now, yeah. maybe the best actor in general. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, one thing I hate that I keep using that term actress. Yeah, I do want to get. It's just like embedded in my head, just because at award ceremonies yeah. and things they say best actor, actress, but I do want to get used to just saying actor. Yeah, I mean, it's 
the thing I've thought about is, and someone brought this up. I think it was Perry Nemiroff on Collider. She was saying how she doesn't. She says actress too, but then she thinks about what if she woke up one day and like, there's like the men <laughs> are like movie reviewers, and she was like a movie reviewer s. Oh. It's kind of weird, right? Yeah. Um, that's just a random thing. Yeah. But, uh, Captain Marvel, Brie Larson looks fantastic mm-hmm. in the role. Uh, I don't think that they're really trying to sell. You heard that BS about mm-hmm. why isn't she smiling? Mm-hmm. Come on, you're a superhero. Why aren't you happy? Then she went on Instagram and posted <laughs> those pictures of Doctor Strange and his poster smiling, yep. Captain America smiling, Iron, Iron Man, Man smiling. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea where that even came from. Yeah. I can't believe that that was even a thing. Yeah. I think you were you were making that point. I'm like, she's she's you know. She's, she's a hero she's, she's a hero she's constantly fighting for yeah. like the world and you know her own life what are you yeah. gonna do you're just gonna smile while you're getting your ass kicked exactly I, that was odd but i think that this is an inspiring trailer for sure uh one thing i saw that a lot of people were kind of underwhelmed by it and i was telling you earlier when we were talking that feels to me sort of like the infinity war effect where yeah. we're coming off of this giant film one of the biggest films years. of all time 10 <laughs> years culmination Coming to this one point, every trailer, every bit, every snippet we got from Infinity War was epic. It was huge because this is an ensemble piece, you know? Yeah. Then we had Ant-Man and the Wasp, sure, between, but you knew what you were getting from that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like this is a new character and all that kind of stuff. And I think that people were just sort of like hyped because they know Captain Marvel's going to be in Avengers 4. They know she's going to be super powerful. So I think they were expecting some giant like Captain Marvel going one-on-one with a giant army or something uh whereas this is really an origin story without being an origin story yeah they're gonna do flashbacks it's gonna be a personal piece and don't get me wrong there's still gonna be some giant set pieces giant action sequences but um i do think that people need to sort of pump the brakes this isn't avengers 4 already yeah this is a lead up to it it's a precursor yeah um but with that being said i thought it had a lot of uh different tones that we're used to seeing in the mcu kind of put together in this i thought when you see her in space it has that guardians feel um a bit but it's also a a little more serious sort of in the vein of a captain america movie or doctor strange uh i heard that the character is sort of gonna be (laughs) i heard that i'm not sure how true it is but i heard reports that captain marvel in these films is gonna give a lot of bad jokes like not bad jokes isn't distasteful just like awkward or poor jokes. Hmm. Maybe it's because I could see her coming to Earth and like giving jokes that are relevant to the Cree or something to Samuel L. Jackson, <laughs> completely flying over his head. Oh wow! I yeah. I think that'd be really fun, a fun bit. Yeah. Now I know it's uh the director's it's her directorial debut on this one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They went through a lot of directors for this too. Yeah. And I think yeah there was that there was that one sh- um I think we were ha- we were having this discussion about. There was that one shot where she was just punching she's a. She's punching the grandma. Yeah, she's that punching the grandma. Getting dropped. And we were thinking, like, how many people? Oh yeah, <laughs> how many people who aren't familiar with like the source material? Yeah. Are <laughs> why the hell would Captain Marvel just punch this old lady? Yeah. Um, obviously has to be a Cree. Mm-hmm. How bad would that be though? <laughs> if it was like the Cree oh. was impersonating someone else and she just drops this old lady. Oh, could talk about that would be comedy, right? Dude, there. I mean, what if? <laughs> she, what if she died? Well, it's the MCU, you know. They <laughs> Kevin <laughs> the Feige just <laughs> pops up and fights her, you know. Yeah, uh, but obviously it has to be a Cree. Cree are um, obviously shape shifting aliens. Uh, they're going to be a big part of Captain Marvel. Obviously, we also have Ronan the Accuser coming back from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a younger prequel. A younger. Yeah, a younger <laughs> Lee Pace. <laughs> that, that's what we got. Yeah. I don't even know. I mean, do he, he seemed pretty young in Guardians? <laughs> He's yeah. got blue makeup. Yeah, well, from I'm these sure pictures, something. yeah, from these pictures I see, they've used that technology on him, and yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, I forgot uh, that he was in it as well. Uh, we also have the Star Force in here, mm. sort of feels like a Green Lantern Corps kind of feel, but obviously it's not going to be bad. Uh, so that's exciting. I think that this is basically, I think the turnout of this film is going to be what DC was hoping for th- with Green Lantern. Oh, I really do, and mm. hopefully they take notes. And they don't copy it, but do something good for themselves. Mm-hmm. I love DC. I'm not trying to bash them. Uh, if I had to choose one, I would probably pick DC overall. Mm-hmm. Uh, just all encompassing comics, TV, oh, yeah. movies, and everything. 
But I'd probably, eh, the MCU would weigh that over the scale. Anyways, though, I think this looks fantastic. They have a lot of, cla- they have that classic uh, um, Captain Marvel look. They have a Kree outfit. They have her with a mohawk, which I think is a really yeah. cool look. And she looks like she's going Super Saiyan at the end, which makes me beg if somehow, some way, Bob Iger is listening to this. Actually, no, that's the wrong man. Whoever the hell is in charge of Dragon Ball Z, uh, can we get Taika Waititi to dra- oh, direct we go. a Dragon Ball Z film? <laughs> Give me the Frieza saga. That's all I want. I will die a happy man, but make it quality like this Captain Marvel look. Mm. And that's all I want. So mm. Captain Marvel leads to Dragon Ball Z being made. You're wow. welcome. I would have never thought it to go that direction. Yep, well, you know, I just changed the face of Dragon Ball Z. Wow. Probably not. But in alternate universe, you got to think, instead of the MCU, there's like the DCU, Dragon Ball shared universe. Yeah. It's just, I, I do like hearing like some of the background details to, you know, this movie, like how Brie Larson spent time with a real Air Force. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, with real Air Force members, and you know, she learned everything, and you know, she, like again, like that—that's I think always that's something that all great actors do, you know. Yeah, and um, it's so comforting to see, you know, the commitment. That's the what commitment you see. Commitment to the character is great. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if you who wouldn't want to work with Brie Larson? Mm-hmm. She's fantastic, and um, I think that obviously that kind of work will translate to the screen. You're gonna have uh one of the premier actresses in the world, and I think that this is another thing for comic book films too. Uh, they're not getting recognized at the Oscars. They don't always deserve to, but I think that Logan definitely deserved a Best Picture nomination. Yeah. I think that Hugh Jackman should have been nominated for Best Actor. Yeah. I think Patrick Stewart should have won for Best Supporting Actor. He wasn't even nominated. Yeah. Um. True. But you constantly see these big, um, sort of high esteemed actors joining these projects, and I think that shows you that there is a change in the culture. Um. I think that. Over the next few years, we will see more superhero and comic book films nominated for stuff. I think Black Panther's a shoe in for at least a couple nominations. Best, best picture, we'll see. But I think costume design for sure. Yeah. And hopefully score. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Captain Marvel coming in hot. We're mm-hmm. a couple months out. Uh, I think it comes out in March of next year. Oh, yeah. Well, that's. that's yeah, that's it's going to creep up. And then we got Infinity War, and then we got uh, Far From Home. Wait, is this a. Is this the start of a new phase? No. How that all works? After Avengers 4. Avengers 4 caps oh. off the phase, and then Spider-Man Far From Home will be the uh, beginning of phase 4. Oh, okay. So we're still in it. We're still in it. Yes, phase. sir. Oh. Uh, Avengers 4 is the bottle cap. Mm, true, yeah. Yeah. So that was, a, that was a... We had a lot of topics there. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, Denzel Washington for <laughs> Professor X. I'm going to start making shirts and buttons. I'm going to be campaigning online. And don't I'm going to start a Kickstarter. Uh, a GoFundMe? Yeah, I'm going to start a GoFundMe. You're going to sell your kidney first. I'm going to sell my kidney. To pay um, $16,000 of I'm his gonna salary. I'm going to set the goal at 17500 So you guys got to raise 1500 for me. I'm going to find a way to meet Denzel. I'm going to say, um, Denzel, would you please play Professor X in a film? Uh, he's probably going to say no. Then I'm going to ask him again. If he says no again, I'm going to do another Kickstarter. We're going to get to Denzel again. I'm going to bring Kevin Feige somehow. That'll be um, by way of another Kickstarter or GoFundMe. After all that fails, I'm going to come home and I'm going to edit uh, Denzel Washington into whatever X-Men film they make. Oh, okay. That, I think that's and then nice. I'm going to start another GoFundMe to get me to be able to wide release it. And then I'll get sued, and I'll go to jail, but it will have all been worth it because we got a fan cut of Denzel Washington as Professor X, and I will walk off happy. Wow. That's, uh, that's quite that's the plan. A, that's episode two. Oh, that's okay. episode two of the Phantom Movie Podcast. I am Eli. That's my boy, G. Yeah. And we will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>